Give me a framework for building trusted AI systems. In my last video, I walked through an example of why it might be difficult to trust AI. In this video, I'll share a framework that helps you incorporate trust in AI systems that you might be building for your company. As you develop AI systems that are internal or customer facing, you have to make your best effort to make it trustable. This will be one of the key competitive advantages of the future. If the system you build reaches the wrong conclusions, your company could be sued. But more importantly, the company's brand will take a huge hit. This framework is based on ethics guidelines proposed by an expert group for the European Union. I'll leave the link to the actual paper in the description below. But first, hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon to be notified of videos on artificial intelligence and architecture that I publish every other week. I'll cover four major parts of the framework. Assumptions and background. The system expectations. Implementation considerations. And a checklist for trustworthiness. AI is a wonderful technology that can transform society in fundamental ways. While on one hand, it could be tremendously beneficial, on the other hand, it could entail a lot of risk. So there is a constant tension between the benefits and the risks that have to be resolved in building AI systems. How do you do that in a systematic way? That's the framework. For an AI system to be trustworthy, it has to be legal, ethical, and robust. Legal means that it has to obey the local laws. I'm intentionally being fuzzy here because this could get really complex really quickly. For example, what happens if the AI system is housed in Seattle, but it's used by people in Timbuktu? The definition of ethical is also fuzzy, but I generally mean that the system should adhere to human values and do the right thing. Robust means that the system is stable, have somewhat of a predictable behavior, and causes the least amount of harm to people or the environment. Yes, these are difficult to define, and right off the bat, I'll tell you that it's very difficult to build trustworthy AI systems. Still, let's go forward with our attempt. We will need a general framework that's applicable across all kinds of models. And then we can fine tune them based on the context. For example, when it comes to either food safety or nuclear environments, we require the systems to be more trustworthy than, for example, when the system is used for movie recommendations. This framework is based on the foundational notion of democracy and individual human rights. One of the reasons this is important is because we can only talk about ethics in this context. In repressive countries or those with limited freedom, the topic of AI ethics does not even make sense. Imagine a human who is in a certain environment and is connected to other humans. This could be in a social setting, such as consumers of government services, or it could be in a business setting where the human is an employee. This human may interact with an AI system and get both benefits from the system as well as assume some risks. For example, you're using AI when you do a Google search. You're using AI when you use maps to navigate. And you're using AI when you use Grammarly to check for spelling and grammar errors. In many other complex environments though, the AI is part of a larger process. For example, when as a consumer, if you apply for a loan, you're going through a process, filling out the app, getting a decision that's really determined by AI system behind the scenes, 
and then getting the money. Likewise, a doctor may use an AI decision support system to treat his or her patients. The AI system needs to adhere to certain constraints that are human-centric. For example, it cannot take away the basic human freedom or manipulate human behavior, thereby respecting human autonomy. It has to treat each human with equal rights, and that includes children, disabled people, minorities, women, etc., without an unfair bias. It cannot take away meaningful work from human employees. It cannot cause harm to humans, and it should allow for humans to control and manage it. It should not cause an asymmetry of power between, say, an employer and an employee, or a citizen and the government. And stakeholders should be able to explain its decision behaviors when required. Sometimes there may be tensions between these principles, and such tensions have to be resolved in an optimal way. If they cannot be resolved, then the system should not be deployed. The requirements for realizing a trusted AI falls into three broad categories. One is human-centric, the other is technical, and the third is legal. On the human-centric aspect, we want humans to have oversight over AI. Humans are the master, and AI should be subservient. When the system does not work as expected, the human should be able to shut it off, whatever that means. We need to ensure the societal and environmental well-being, unbiased treatment, fair and diversity of representation. This means that the system should have been trained with data that is representative of the full spectrum where AI operates. For unbiased behavior, we should ensure that the data used to train the AI system is not skewed, as well as bring people of different and diverse backgrounds to design and build the system. Fundamental human rights cannot be compromised. For fairness, we should adopt universal design principles that ensures that people of different abilities can use the system in the same way. On the technical side, we want the system to be robust and resilient against attacks, reliable and accurate, and reproducible. If the system is compromised or behaves erratically, we should be able to bring it back to a safe state. We also want the data privacy to be respected and governed properly. The quality of the data should be high and access to the data should be controlled. On the legal side, we want the system to be transparent and explainable and auditable for its actions so any errors can be explained or corrected. Its behavior should be independently auditable. The system should not misrepresent itself as a human and humans need to know if they're talking to a system. In reality, Trade-offs have to be made, but such trade-offs should follow well-written guidelines so decisions about compromises are not made in a haphazard way. Here are the major steps in building AI systems. Actually, we're only talking about machine learning systems, which is a large part of general AI systems. Gather relevant data. This can be an enterprise-wide exercise and involves data cleansing and feature engineering. In the training step, we use data to train different types of models and explore the parameter space to see which parameters give the best performance. And then in the testing step, we validate the model with the data that the system has not yet seen to ensure that the model can generalize over data and reduce errors. Deploying the model is a big step because we have to make choices about the deployment environment, about packaging the model to handle scalability, security, and many other considerations. For example, we may decide to deploy the system on the cloud, scale using containers, and package them 
in a way to handle large volumes of requests when they happen by auto scaling. Finally, in the monitoring step, we continue to observe the behavior of the system. If the system is self-learning, then it may learn from new data, but that could also cause model drifts, which may or may not be desirable. Monitoring will help us look for erratic behavior and determine if the system has to be retrained on new data. In each of these stages, we need to apply some basic requirements for trustworthy AI systems. Different stages of this process require different guidelines to make the system trustworthy. For example, data has to be unbiased. The model should be designed with privacy and security built in and proper access controls. Testing should be done with real data and with a diverse group of people as much as possible. Monitoring should be continuous and alerts generated on unexpected behavior. From a non-technical perspective, we need the right regulations, code of conduct for developers as well as designers, possible standardization, certification, accountability, education to foster an ethical mindset, stakeholder participation, and diversity of teams. Based on all this, the AI trustworthiness framework, we can use a list of items to be validated against the AI system to make sure that we are indeed building a trustworthy system. This list is not intended to be comprehensive and you have to consider your particular situation's nuances, but this framework gives the majority of the guidance. Suffice to say that trust in AI is critical and we're just beginning to explore the boundaries of this space. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing and giving me a thumbs up. If you're already on my mailing list, you'll get a PDF of this picture. If you sign up now through the website, you'll also get a PDF and also other videos that give you a perspective on the future of work. Thanks for watching.